So for the next two hours or so, we're going to go over hand calculations. Uh, this is going to be a lot of numbers, a lot of calculations by hand. Obviously, a lot of you are going to use, or most of you are, are going to use software design. But hopefully, this will give you a good idea of what the software is actually doing. And if you see something that looks odd, you have a baseline to figure out if you know the software is wrong or you input something wrong. You can see where that is coming from. Uh, so my email address is on the bottom. I realize I'm going to throw a lot of stuff at you. If you do have questions um, after the presentation, please email me, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, if any of this part of the webinar is interesting, you want to increase your knowledge, my business partner and I wrote a book during the recession, um, just kind of basically vomited all the things we knew about postage and concrete in this book. Uh, the first half of it is the undergraduate course that we teach at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and UCLA. Uh, it's also used at a couple of other universities. I know it's used at, I think, Portland, Penn State. I believe it's at Illinois as well, University of Illinois, excuse me, and some other places. But in general, the first half of the book is the undergraduate course that we do teach. And the second half of the book is more of how we do things in practice, detailing, observations, you know, the good and bad of post tensioning, what to do, what not to do, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of pictures in there. Um, covers a lot of different topics from general slab design, beams, diaphragm design, stud rails, stuff like that, um, and other aspects. If you're interested, it is always available to you. So let's get started. Uh, podium slabs, just in general, and a brief um, you know, statement up front. This is the second webinar on podium slabs that I have given through SK Gauche. The first one which I gave a few times over the last couple of years, was much more uh, of a generic talk. Podiums are this, look out for that, stuff like that. Very low in calculation. So there's going to be certain things that I'm not going to cover in a more generic podium slab discussion. This is going to be much more the nuts and bolts of how to design post-tensioning in a podium slab setting. So if there's things that don't make a little bit of sense, uh, obviously, please ask a question, or it may be more uh, detailed in the previous uh, webinar um, that has a lot more of the concepts and the, the general nature of post-tension slabs for podiums that I'm going to cover in this talk. But in general, podium slab is typically uh, a separate structure. You have a concrete, let's call it a substructure, that holds up typically a wood or metal stud framed apartment structure. Typically it could be an office building if you really wanted to, but for the most part you have parking below the podium slab and then you have wood framing above and below or above the podium structure. The major primary difference between let's say a um, office building or a hotel, let's say is that in a podium structure, the concrete columns obviously support the slab will rarely, if ever, align with the bearing walls or the columns of the apartment structure. So literally, there is no direct load transfer between a steel column or a wood post right on top of a concrete column. It's usually out in the middle of the midspan somewhere. And so the slab itself is transferring all the vertical and lateral load to the columns. Now, in a perfect world, if you could somehow put all of your posts um, on the concrete columns, the slab wouldn't be doing very much. But that doesn't work out that way, especially when you have bearing walls at 12 or 14 on center. The slab basically is going to be the entire transfer vertically, which is a huge thing, obviously. But also, especially if you're in California or on the West Coast, you're also transferring all of the lateral load into the shear walls of your structure. So there's a dynamic or a, sorry, a seismic diaphragm, hold downs, you know, uh, base shear, stuff like that, you have to account for it with the upper structure plus the structure itself, the concrete structure. In addition, obviously, you have to make sure it can support the vertical weight of the structure and the live loads. Typically, two-way slabs are used as a primary floor system. Uh, I know people have used kind of a long span system if you're more um, used to seeing post tensioning in terms of long span garages. If you go to a you know a large football stadium, baseball stadium, airport stuff like that, a lot of the garages are long span where they will have beams in a three foot plus or minus system depth. They'll go sixty feet or so, and you just have this wide open space for parking. Um, again, that works great for parking. The typical issue with podium slabs is that you still have a sixty foot plus spanning system. Regardless if it's steel, wood, concrete, concrete with post-tensioning, 
something going 60 plus feet is going to have some vibration issues and some deflection issues. And typically the deflection issues are what causes the biggest issue with the wood framing. Now, a concrete beam going 60 feet can probably deflect two or three inches and be quote unquote within code limits. However, when you drag a wood building down, um, even more close to that, you get cracking facades, the doors don't work, the windows rack, stuff like that. So usually the deflection just by the nature of the beast of a beam system makes it a little more challenging. And then also when you have three or four foot deep beams all over the place, the path of travel of the plumbing lines, the electrical conduits, the HVAC system, stuff like that that becomes a little more problematic because then you have to put those underneath the beams. They just can't go plowing through the structure that's holding up, uh, you know, four or five stories of wood. So again, not that it can't be done, but typically it is a two-way slab system is the primary use, whether it's post-tensioning or just rebar concrete.